Good afternoon, everybody, both here at the Da Vinci House as well as those that have joined us online. I would just like to first welcome a few of our honored guests. First of all, our executive chairperson of the Da Vinci Institute, Professor Ben Anderson, our CEO of the Da Vinci Institute, Professor Javier Klopper, our chair of council, Mr. Sachaba Motsiloa, our um, chair of the Da Vinci Institute Senate, Dr. Franzal Deploy Saliers, the chair of the Da Vinci Convocation who joins us online, Dr. Gianni Mariano, and our 2021 laureate, Professor Saborno Isaac Bari, who joins us from the United States of America online. Welcome, Prof. Bari. And I would also like to welcome each and every single Da Vinci stakeholder to this, our 2022 academic opening. I always say that at Da Vinci, I love the fact that our academic opening and our flag raising ceremony takes place under our beautifully tree, beautifully garden, because that is really what an academic is all about. It is about rebirth, regrowth, and really just starting fresh and saying what are the possibilities. This year at Da Vinci, we are very focused on our promise to each and every one of you as a Da Vinci stakeholder, and that is about co-creating realities. Every year at our academic opening, we raise the Da Vinci Institute flags. The four flags that symbolize the Institute. These flags remain flying in front of our Institute for the entire year. We select our purple cow winners of the previous year to raise our flags. This is the internal process at Da Vinci where we comment as Da Vinci colleagues on the remarkability of one another. And through that process of co-creation, a group of winners is selected of those that have really made a mark, a mark of remarkability on shifting, co-creating and changing the face of the Institute in the previous year. Standing in front of you are these award recipients from 2021. We are going to now raise the first flag. The first flag to be raised is by Alpheus Smith, one of our Purple Cow winners. Alpheus is going to be raising the flag of the Republic of South Africa. We recognize at Da Vinci that we have a diverse and inclusive student and stakeholder population, really made up of people from all over the world, all walks of life and diverse backgrounds. But we raise the flag of the Republic of South Africa to mark the fact that Da Vinci House and our soil is marked on the South African ground that we stand today. Over and above that, our qualifications are registered and accredited in South Africa through the various bodies. And this is the reason that we raise the flag to the Republic of South Africa to represent the place in which our qualifications are registered and accredited, or rather to say that our institute is registered and our qualifications accredited. And as that South African flag goes up, we also say that it is also about sustainable societies and ensuring that each of us impact on humane, sustainable societies. And we hope to see growth and rebirth in the South African socio-economic context in 2022. Thank you, Alpheus, for raising the South African flag as it flies today. Pity we don't have a little bit more wind to take it off. Thank you to our magnificent drummers. Right, the next person to be raising a flag is Charlene Vanya. Charlene will be raising the flag of the Da Vinci Institute. Many of you know and understand that Da Vinci has got a very specific symbol that represents our logo, and that is the volute. Many people ask us, what is the purpose of the volute, and what does the volute stand for? Well, the volute is systemic in its very design. The volute is about the fact that learning, growing, and opportunities never cease to exist. We are constantly in a state of flux. There is an ebb and a flow in every single person's life and in every single person's learning journey. So we say that learning 
never ever ends. And for that reason, the volute has no beginning and no end, but rather it is circular in motion, which is showing the ever flow of each individual as they embark on their education journey. Thank you, Charlene, as you raise the Da Vinci flag and it flies today. The next person to be raising his flag is going to be Rian Fanikak. Rian was the overall 2021 Purple Cow winner who really showed remarkable change at the Institute from a technology and a management of technology perspective. He is our guardian or head of our IT and technology space. And we have certainly seen a shift in the Institute since Rian has taken leadership within that space, working side by side with Alpheus. So Rian is raising a flag that is symbolic and is so embedded within the Da Vinci culture that we would not know or understand a society of Da Vinci without the purple cow. But the thing I want to remind each and every one of you about is that the purple cow at Da Vinci has two symbols. So on the one hand, it is representing the author Seth Godin's views about a purple cow and standing out of a herd. Seth Godin speaks to the reality that if you stand shoulder to shoulder amongst peers that are as qualified and as good as you are, what is it that you are going to do that will make you step out and have an absolute mark of remarkability. And we believe that the Da Vinci qualifications will stand you in good stead for this. Over and above that, we've got a second symbolism of the cow and it connects very much to our African heritage. And that is about Ubuntu, I am because we are. A cow shows the prowess and the prowess of somebody's herd shows and measures their success to some extent. So at Da Vinci, we say that as your own herd grows and as your success multiplies, we hope that you will never forget the principles that we are here to influence the co-creation of humane, sustainable societies. And therefore, Ubuntu, I am because we are. You're a purple cow, which then leads the rest of the herd to be able to develop and sustain themselves. Our last flag raiser is Renaka Mudlia. Renaka is raising a very important part of the Da Vinci family. She raises the flag of TT100. The TT100 Business Innovation Awards Program is a very special organization that Da Vinci holds dear and has a massive role. Our board of the TT100 is made up of many Da Vinci members, but not only that, the importance of this is that these Business Innovation Awards have been running prior to Da Vinci, but they apply the TIPS managerial leadership framework as part of assessing those organizations that are considered to manage technology, innovation, and people in a systemic way. These companies are awarded every single year at our TT100 Business Innovations Award Ceremony, which is towards the end of the year. And at Da Vinci, we take these case studies and we merge them back into our syllabi. Not only that, it is also part of the community engagement strategy at the Da Vinci Institute to be part of TT100 and the rural schools that they support in the regions that they occupy. And we are extremely proud of the work that we have done with Gumedi and Niakani schools in the last year with the TT100 and Da Vinci Institute in a symbiotic relationship. Right, so we have now hoisted these flags. It needs to just go up a little bit more, the South African flag. And I would now like to say that the Da Vinci Institute academic year is officially opened with these flags. We will now get the academic procession to regroup. I will walk first and then the purple cow winners will come behind me as it will follow with the rest of the academic procession. It's important for me to point out that our academic procession is a really important part of our institute. These are the academics and the business leaders and the business minds that are also part of forming, reforming and shaping the Da Vinci Institute strategy. We look forward to a remarkable year ahead and we will see you around the other side of the building as we continue with the celebration of academic opening 2022.
The academic procession may please be seated. So although I've already done the opening, I just want to put one thing out there, and that is that today is all about the official academic opening. And when we speak about the purpose of universities, it really is the focus on knowledge. What is it that we embark on when we come to an institute of learning? We want to do certain things. We want to awaken our sense of self, awaken our senses, each and every one of them, feeling a tingling to our bones. And this is about being open to knowledge, knowledge creation, knowledge generation, and every single aspect of knowledge, knowledge absorption. And it is a really critical part of the journey that we as academics, we as students, and we as lifelong learners continue to evolve knowledge and evolve ourselves to be recipients of knowledge. So as I stand here today, I really hope that you enjoy your journey and awakening your senses with the knowledge that the Institute hopes to further and to actually disseminate to each and every one of you. Today to deliver the academic message is our Executive Dean Academic at the Da Vinci Institute, who is also the Chair of the Da Vinci Institute Senate, Dr. Franzel de Ploy-Saliers. Dr. de Ploy-Saliers is really an accomplished academic whose passion is about students and the student journey. She is someone who is an esteemed author. She is also somebody who really takes the student journey and the supervision process extremely seriously. But for her, the student experience and the immersion in knowledge is critical. So today I would like to introduce to you our Chair of Senate, Dr. Franzel de Ploy-Saliers, to deliver the academic address. Thank you, Dr. Kernan, and a very warm Da Vinci welcome to all of you. And thank you so much for joining us here today for the 2022 academic opening. So this year, I want to start by telling you a story of a praying mantis called Meraki. In March 2022, during the first total lockdown, I was one day taking down washing from the washing line. And when I got into the kitchen, I saw there was a praying mantis, a fully grown praying mantis, in the laundry basket. So I picked her up and I put her on one of the house plants in the kitchen and I opened the window for her thinking that she would leave. But after about three days, she was still there and hasn't left. So I decided that maybe I should feed her something. Now we've got quite an interesting problem because we have bees that keep on coming back and they keep on making, I'm not sure if it's a nest or a hive, but anyway, one of the two, they um, keep on building a hive or a nest in the garden. So we've had a beekeeper coming we removed the bees several times, but they keep on returning. So eventually the beekeeper said, rather keep the, the bees and we will, I will make a hive for you. So he said, but I don't want an ugly hive. So when he brought the hive, the hive ended up looking like a doll's house. So now we have a beehive that looks like a doll's house. Be that as it may, um, what was really nice about having the beehive was that I could catch a bee for the praying mantis every day. Now, for those of you who are familiar with bees, you will know that they are quite docile early in the morning and late in the afternoons. So it's actually quite easy to catch a bee when it's early enough in the morning. So every day I would catch a bee for Meraki and feed her the bee. Now, she would take the bee very politely, wouldn't grab it, just take it really nicely, and then she would eat the bee. And she would eat everything of the bee, except for the wings, the legs, and the stinger. And my sincere apologies to the vegans and vegetarians for the graphic detail. So Meraki then traveled between the kitchen, the TV room, and she had a particular preference for the bar, but would continuously go back to the plant in the kitchen where she would lay her eggs underneath the leaves. 
Now, Meraki cohabited with us for about seven months. She passed away in September of that year, 2020. And in the time that she was living with us, she consumed around about 200 bees. Now, I'll return to Meraki, but I want to tell you another story as well. So when I was a first year student at university, we had something called fillers. So you could take any subject that would give you a rounded education. And I decided to do anthropology. Now, not only did COVID take my eyesight, it also affected my memory. Although Prof. Harvey pointed out to me the other day that it maybe has more to do with my ID number than with COVID. But um, be that as it may, I then took anthropology. And in one of the case studies that we did, the anthropologist was trying to explain the concept of individualism to a chief of a tribe who had very great difficulty with this concept. And after listening very carefully to the anthropologist explaining individualism to him, he then asked him a question. So he said, so if I eat this chicken, which part of me is me and which part of me is the chicken? And that is something that stayed with me throughout my life. And till this day, whenever I have chicken, I think of which part is me and which part is the chicken. So when human beings die, when the moment of material undoing comes, we, creatures of moment and matter, simply cannot understand how something as exquisite as thoughts, memories, and feelings can vanish into nothingness. How can creatures of substance and mass fathom a thing without substance or mass? How can a creature who will certainly die have an understanding of things that exist forever? Yet every atom that belongs to you, or rather that is borrowed by you, truly belongs to everything and everyone else. Scientists now believe that there are a finite number of atoms in the universe. So individual atoms are therefore cycled through generations and generations of living creatures and minds, connecting over and over again to make a whole out of parts. And although scattered, everything actually makes up a totality. We can think of it like the waves on the ocean. When we look at the waves on the ocean, they look like individual waves, but yet, they all form part of the same ocean. They are part of it, not separate of it. And in fact, they are not part of the ocean, they are the ocean. So here we are, you and me, made of particles, both absolutely vulnerable and absolutely indestructible. And with these particles, we make everything that invigorates life with aliveness. Thus, we are all part of the same system. Those of you who have been studying at Da Vinci or have been with Da Vinci for a long time will know that we often say that we do not train economists, financial managers, accountants, etc. At Da Vinci, we develop managerial leaders. And in order to be a managerial leader, you have to be a systemic thinker. That is also why systemic thinking forms part of the core of the TIPS managerial leadership model. It is for the same reason that we place so much emphasis on transdisciplinarity and diversity, and why the National Development Plan is incorporated into every module and every program offered at Da Vinci. So for this academic year, there will be a renewed focus on systemic thinking and business and community-driven action learning. As Davincians, we will also continue to look at the future and the beautiful dance between the algorithms and the algorithms and contribute to writing the success story of Africa. 
So back to Meraki. The egg she laid hatched a couple of months later, long after her, her death. And I must say I was rather disappointed uh, when I saw the tiny praying mantises. They didn't even have the slightest re resemblance to bees. Now, Meraki's name was given to her based on a TV character that was on television when I was a child called Mana Marak, who was actually a green alien. But because she was female, I decided to just call her Meraki. And in this week, I saw a posting on Facebook where someone posted the meaning of the word Meraki. Now, let's say that synchronicity, which is something that I'm particularly curious about, but don't want to learn too much about because I'm scared it will lose its magic. Nonetheless, Meraki means to do something with soul, creativity, or love, and to leave a piece, an essence of yourself in your work. So may all of us in this academic year do our work with soul, creativity, and love. And may we remember that we, and everything around us, are essentially one big system. So thank you for listening to me. Thank you for choosing Da Vinci. And I hope all of you have an enriching year at your academic home of remarkability. Thank you. Our heart difference is a little bit um, jarring when I have to use a microphone, Francois. Thank you very much to Dr. Deploy Saliers. I'm sure very enriching for all of you and those that have joined us online as well. Um, thank you for that. And I think from that perspective, may we all have a year filled with lots of Meraki. And let's hope we don't have to catch many bees, but we can rather catch our knowledge and our curiosity and our transdisciplinarity and our inclusivity and our co-creation at play, rather than having to go into those beehives between you and Mark Fuller. Um, that seems to be something that you have in common. I also would like to, I see many of you commenting on the chat, on the screen saying you hope Prof. Saborno Isaac Bari is going to be speaking. Prof. Bari is a visitor today. He says he wants to join and engage. But Prof. Bari, if you just want to wave and say hello to everybody, they're all very excited to see you having joined us. So um, if you could please <laughs> wave and say hello, we would love everyone to see you on screen. Those of you that are on screen, you will see Prof. Bari's picture up. Those of you sitting here, we can see you over there. Um, Leon, I'm not sure if we can unmute his mic to say hello. Um, so Prof. Bari, when your mic is unmuted, if we could please say hello um, to everybody sitting here today. While we're waiting for Prof. Bari's mic to unmute and say hello, we've got something um, very exciting today. As you know, we usually do our drums. We've got something with a little bit of a different flavor this year, and that is that I'm going to introduce to you Nsika Yesizwe Marimba Band. We are extremely excited to feature a phenomenally talented ladies band this year at the Da Vinci Institute. These remarkable and talented musicians and musical minds have been the most phenomenal performing traditional acts and theater productions. They've been part of productions such as The Lion King, Africa Mojo, Drumstick, Bosadi Le Maropa, Revival, and many others. And it is indeed an honor for us that these ladies decided to certainly live up to the Da Vinci spirit of being agile, aligned, and engaged. When in 2016, they decided to really put their talents and their creative musical ideas together, and they formed the uniqueness, which is soon to be known, which was soon to be known and is now known as Nsika Yesizwe Marimba Band. Today they will be entertaining us and they will be working alongside us to really co-create a musical reality. And we must always remember that a drum beat is very significant to our hearts. If you think of Duduf, Duduf, the sound of your heart. If you think of music and the melodious way that things ebb and flow together, any similarities you're hearing in this? The co-creation of reality and the volute of the Da Vinci Institute. So for us, music has much depth and meaning. We are now going to hear the sounds of God Bless Africa.
Give a thought to Africa. Thank you very much. At Davinci, we speak about the colors of remarkability, and you certainly represent these colors in bright, beautiful forms. Thank you very much for sharing your talent with us this morning. Our next speaker is a man who needs very little introduction at the Davinci Institute. He's our chair of the Davinci Institute Council. The council plays a pivotal and critical role at Davinci with a very strong focus on the Institute's strategic direction. The Council is made up of many business representatives representing various sectors, and as we connect and collect the dots of these sectors, they guide and assist us in the implementation of the Institute's strategy. So, with such a collection and connection of multiple um, dots, we have to have a lead dot, which Sachaba is definitely not the way we do it. We say it's a cooperative dot. And there is one man who is no more cooperative than anyone else I know, and that is the chair of the Da Vinci Institute Council, Sachaba Motilua. Sachaba is somebody who truly takes these two actions of saying strategic and strategic imperatives and dancing with the cooperative engagement that is so critical to the Da Vinci philosophy. And although he is the head of council, he's a cooperatively engaged leader who is always ensuring 
that all the voices are heard and is able to measure the critical aspects of strategy with the individual voices. He is somebody who truly understands that strategy is a systemic thinking process as much as it is about implementation. It gives me great pleasure to introduce to you our collector and connector of cooperative dots of the Da Vinci Institute Council, Mr. Sachaba Motsilua. Thank you very much, Dr. Mala Kunin. <clears throat> Earlier, I was in the library and I had a brief conversation with Naren. He reminded me that in 2017, when he first uh, met me, he doesn't remember what I said, but he remembers the shoes that I was wearing. <laughs> and I had thought of talking about the shoes, but given the sauna, it becomes a bit of a challenge to talk about the shoes. So I choose to take this as something from what he said, that um, confidently he found me to be quite comfortable in my own shoes and where I stand, uh, a confidence that uh, says there is something special about this particular person. What he forgets to mention is the confidence came from where I was standing, which is here at the Da Vinci Institute amongst the people that uh, you will mingle with in the academic year. Because when you are with the people that uh, you trust, the people that hold you, uh, you do feel that extra confident in what you do. Musicians can also leave you quite um, not so comfortable because they always operate at the top 1%. If I listen to the voices here, I'm reminded that you always have to show uh, your very best, and that's what the musicians uh, do. The 2022 academic opening comes at a time when we are operating in a newer context. I'm sure most of us know that change is the only context, only constant, and we can never ever uh, always say it's a new context. It's always perhaps newer because it's forever changing. And with it comes some challenges that we have had to, to navigate. We've got businesses in the main driving around now blind. Blinded because uh, the people that are leading businesses, their vision is a bit blurred given the pandemic context and all the challenges that we have had. And you can imagine if a business is being uh, led by people that uh, don't have clear vision what that means and the implications for the sustainability of that particular business. So sometimes we step out of that to go to an uh, institute like the academic, the, the Da Vinci Institute to try and come and see better. I'm inspired by Michael Brown in his book, uh, Alchemy of the Heart, and he tells a story to illustrate blindness. A stranger comes across somebody in a dark alley but underneath a, a, a lamp post that's got a light. And the stranger asked the man searching and say, have you lost something? And the person said, yes, I've lost a very important key and I'm looking for it. And the stranger said, can I help you look for the key? And yes, they did. But because the light was just shining around, not such a big area, within a very few seconds, they had covered the area and the stranger said, there is nothing here. Are you sure you lost uh, the key here? And the, strange, the, the person said, no, I didn't lose it here. I lost it in my home. Then why are you looking for it outside, of, outside under this street lamp? The person responded, because the lighting in my home is not working. We too are in a predicament in which the lighting in is out within our home, and so we conveniently search for what is within us where it cannot be found, which is outside of ourselves. When you come on an academic journey at the Da Vinci Institute and you are looking for the voice outside to come in you, it's gonna be a very challenging journey. 
because the voice that is in you is adequate to what we provide, is an environment in which perhaps the backdrop can be darker for you to see your light, so that when you go back into the businesses and the organizations that you lead, you can be able to remove that blindness, particularly in this challenging and changed context, so that the business can see better. Because as a society, we are looking for sustainable businesses that can help us as a people, perhaps to enjoy our human experience while we still have it in this particular world. So I encourage you not only to look for the light from the outside when you get here in your academic journey, but to make sure that that which is within you shines and shines brightly because only you can make it come, come alive and the environment is going to be conducive for you to do that. As the Council um, of the Da Vinci Institute, our main focus, as Dr. Mala Kunin spoke about, is to make sure that from a strategy we make the Institute sustainable and relevant, not only for South Africa, but Africa and humanity uh, as, a, as a whole. So when you go out and you co-create, I'll encourage you in your journey to make sure that you are in a diverse group of people, diverse thinking, because the solutions that you'll be designing are not for your own consumption only, but for the consumption of society at large. And it's through co-creation with as broad and as diverse and inclusive a people that you do with that you'll be able then to come up with solutions that are sustainable and for the benefit of uh, humanity. Um, coming back to your story, I'm not sure what I am because I eat everything. So when we are talking about chicken, I was thinking about bacon, I was thinking about so many things that now my mind cannot concentrate. Um, Basutu, when you travel, they give you the barbie, which is a provision. And that provision is allow, it allows you to just make sure that you drink water and you can quench your thirst because they believe that water is life and a lot of us are made of, life, of water. So on, my, on your academic journey, drink that water and not be the chicken, but be water because you are. And that uh, water that I'm talking about is what you get as a support from uh, the academic staff, our supervisors, uh, everybody here online, offline, so that in the end, you truly do enjoy the journey and the destination that you are headed for, whatever your destination is. On behalf of the Da Vinci Institute Council, I wish you only the best in the 2022 academic year and beyond as you go into the world to co-create with those that do not come from here but are definitely looking for your light. Thank you. As I'm sure you will agree, um, both our speakers are highly inspirational. And Sachaba and Franzel speaking about food and speaking about water as sustenance, I would like to add the element of blood and say that blood is a life force that runs through us. And at Da Vinci, our blood is purple, we say. And the reason for that is because we believe that the colors of purple signify our remarkability, being the purple cow. And therefore, I want to say to you that the purple blood of remarkability runs through each and every one of your veins. So letting your light shine will be something that we enjoy seeing on your journey. Franzel, if I had to think of all the things I ate, I think I would be in Sachaba's position, so I will cast my mind to something else, and that is Sachaba's point about light. I think we focus a lot at Da Vinci on our light and our darkness, and I often use the quote that's been made famous by Madiba, but is not written by him, and that is that our deepest fear is not that we're inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure, and it is actually our light and not our darkness that most frightens us. So at Da Vinci, I say we ask ourselves, who are we to be remarkable, brilliant, talented purple cows? Actually, who are you not to be? And I ask you today to let your light shine, to never forget your shadow, but to always remember the inner voice that Sachaba spoke about, because this is critical to your formation as a holistic individual. And you, our Chair of Council, is certainly a man of holism. Thank you for your insights and your wisdom. Prof Bari, are you unmuted now? 
Oh, we can't hear you. Just well, a moment, just a moment. It's so nice to see you here, even uh, though I might be leaving soon. No problem. Thank you for joining us. And we just want to say it's wonderful to see your face again. We follow you all the time and we're very happy that you've joined us. Thank you for joining us and have a lovely, is it evening or morning there? I'm behind on my clocks. Morning. Very early in the morning, Prof Bari. Have a wonderful day then ahead uh, of you. Yes, it's almost 6 a.m. And I joined this meeting at 5 a.m. It's pretty early in the morning. Absolutely. So we will let you go and have your breakfast, Prof Bari, and we thank you for joining us and representing um, the Institute as our laureate. Thank you very much for that. Our next speaker that's going to be giving you a few words of wisdom is our CEO of the Da Vinci Institute, Professor Harbia Klopper. Prof Klopper is somebody who's able to really measure that dance between what is very important to us here, which is situated business learning or contextual learning and academia. He's somebody who really does that dance between understanding the needs of us as a business school to really be out there and ensuring return on investment as well as social return on investment, which is critical to what we do here when we speak about business-driven action learning, and also connected to that, the importance of quality academic endeavors. He is going to give us a little bit of insight into some of the new ventures and endeavors that Da Vinci will be embarking on in the year 2022 and welcoming you to the new academic year. Prof Bari, we hope that you have a good day at school today and a good morning and rest of your afternoon. Thank you for joining us. Prof Klopper? Thank you, Program Director, for the introduction. Um, and I'm not going to speak about food and drink because I'm really hungry after all this talk. Um, to the Chairman of the Institute, to the members of Council Representative and our Senate, to all the colleagues, staff, faculty, alumni, current and prospective students, and our stakeholders out there, uh, thank you for joining us here in person and online, and a good afternoon. It gives me immense pleasure uh, to speak on behalf of the Institute here today and to welcome you uh, to the House of Remarkability. Um, to all our new and also our current students, thank you for returning to the Institute of Technology Management. Uh, to all our staff, um, although we already started, uh, it's a symbolic start of the academic year and for us it's a really a special moment here today. I hope that by engaging with us in 2022, you will come to appreciate the depth of the diversity and the rich tradition of our teaching, learning, research, and our innovation focus on excellence. And that, that it will make your stay remarkable in many ways and that you will also experience it, that you will feel it, that you will sense it, and that you will live it. Reflecting back on the past year and the COVID pandemic, you know, bring many memories to mind. And I think it's appropriate to acknowledge the constraints, the challenges, the adaptability that we were challenged with, and also the moments of uh, uncertainty and the stress that it brought about. And I want to congratulate each and every one of you and say, well done. I take my hat off to you. I think from here onwards, hopefully it will be downhill and we can only look forward. If I reflect back to what President Ramaphosa said at the State of the Nation address last week, he specifically mentioned the education sector and um, how he's glad that we can in many ways return to the normal, giving the kids, and for that matter, youngest, young people, and I also want to add working professionals and students of life, the opportunity to return to a normal. But I immediately want to add, from a Da Vinci perspective, we do hope that that normal doesn't fall back into the old routines. Even as we start the academic year in 2022, the threat of the virus remain very prominent in, in our midst. And I want to urge each of you at a personal level and also collective level to stay safe. Uh, in all our academic adventures, whenever you engage with each other on campus, off campus, at work, wherever you are, we take safety very serious at the Institute. Um, 
and I would like to remind you to visit our policy on vaccination uh, on our website. You can talk to the registrar. Uh, it's in our policy uh, repository. Um, we believe that it's important that we support the drive of the nation, of South Africa, in staying safe. And in many ways, the embracing of this is also for us creating new realities as we move into the future. So we must never be afraid of change. And our Chair of Council spoke about that. So the mandatory vaccination policy for us is important. And for all our students, we do hope and we wish you the best safety and wealth in the year 2020 ahead. In all our engagements in this year to come, we would wish you that, enjoy, that you enjoy every moment. Uh, it's an opportunity to have fun. It's an opportunity to engage with people. It's an opportunity to just be yourself and reflect and be open about matters. And as you embark on this important and exciting journey, a journey of discovery, we do hope that if we stand here in a year from now, we reflect back, we say 2022 was a wonderful year, but we're even more excited about the year ahead. For us at the Institute this year, uh, we're going to specifically focus at the, on the six competencies in our TIPS managerial framework. Uh, and they're all there. You should know them offhand. You know, co-create meaning, co-create direction, facilitate conversation, engage with our creative networks, um, and celebrate, engage um, accomplishments. And we challenge you, and we will do so, and we already started with that, to really think about these six competencies and ask yourselves, how can I use that? How does it change me? How can I utilize it to move forward? So through embracing lifelong learning in a cooperative manner, in a true Da Vinci style, we must prepare ourselves for the future. A future that is uncertain, a future that is unpredictable, a future that is unknown and unknowable, a future that is complex, and a future that is constantly changing. And in this regard, I remind you about our dream to influence co-creation of sustainable societies. If we look at our business and our operations, I think our purpose is very, very clearly defined. To strengthen the growth of agile, aligned, and engaged managerial leaders, we will co-create innovative ecosystems. And we're not just saying that we're really going to live it this year. So our approach to learning, and as Dr. Koonen have reflected on that, is to look at the creation of knowledge or the production thereof and the nature of it and induct that into the intricacies of a multidisciplinary perspective and disciplines as we move forward. And in producing this knowledge, also then ask ourselves, how do we adapt and how do we apply old knowledge in new contexts? Not everything needs to be reinvented. Sometimes it's just a matter of uh, utilizing it differently. At Avinci, we embrace curiosity, we value co-creation, we value inclusivity, and we value transdisciplinarity. We are learning community. So as much as we learn from and through each other, it is our wish this year that as we extend learning beyond our daily activities, our facilitated classroom discussions, our seminars, our engagements with each other, on and off campus, that we start and mark it as starting here today. We also believe that in the year to come, we must turn to actively engage and involve ourselves in the community. And here I specifically refer to the two community projects that we adapted, the Gumeni Primary School in the Underberg and the Nyokani Education Center in Gianni. Your involvement is essential and very important outside the classroom outside the seminars, in your daily activities under the umbrella from a Da Vinci perspective to ensure a holistic development and growth in our education endeavors. You must, however, also learn to balance your academic life, your extracurricular activities, your social life, in becoming a well-rounded and well-grounded graduate, alumnus, staff, and community and stakeholder of the Institute. We work hard to create a caring and supportive institutional culture, an affirming and supportive environment, and in the process, we value and celebrate diversity. So in a policy that we recently introduced on inclusivity, you will see how serious we take that. And I think that's 
part of the reality where we, we need to go in, in this year to come. And in doing so, respect and also appreciate individual differences. We encourage each one of you to be open-minded and be willing to share new ideas, new perspectives, and new views amongst our discussions with staff, students, alumni, and stakeholders. More importantly, we encourage you to also establish new bonds with the people around there, and specifically the young people, and their lived experiences that might and also must be different to your own. Reflecting back on the year, uh, we revisit our strategic uh, document 2022-2024 for the year to come, and we will continue to position the Institute as a premium higher education with the accredited products that uh, Dr. Kunin mentioned earlier on. And in doing so, there are five important things that I want to remind you of. First of all, it's relevance, it's inclusivity, it's quality, intelligence, and definitely diversity, as already pointed out. So when we talk about relevance, for us, we're going to go and we're going to keep on expanding our educational offerings and services into the African continent and agenda to ensure that we broaden access and accessibility. When we talk about inclusivity, it's ensuring that a holistic and inclusive transformational agenda permeates in all facets of the Institute. When we talk about quality, I specifically refer to the Institute's Integrated Quality Management Framework, and I've said yesterday even that's for us a very important discussion this year. When we talk about intelligence, it's to establish a clear research agenda for the future that includes the positioning of our TIPS managerial framework in an evolving industrial revolutions context. And when we speak about diversity, it's expanding our global institutional and faculty arrangements within a true transdisciplinary perspective. So if we move forward in the here, you will hear us talk a lot about five specific strategic focus areas in doing so. And the very first one is to ensure the relevance of the Institute in different socio-economic contexts. So we must always be contextually relevant and we must always be sensitive to other contexts in which we operate. We're also going to enhance the visibility of the Institute in our society. And there's very exciting things happening in our branding space, so I can just say watch the social media, look at the website. We will continue to promote cooperative engagements amongst our diverse stakeholders. And again, the emphasis on diverse, not just stakeholders. Fourthly, we will keep on designing and develop and implement bespoke educational products uh, and services to stay abreast of time and to keep up with the space. And that's, for us, a very natural discussion that we will not walk away from. And then, fifthly, to promote a relevant technology-enabled and innovative-led integration of education. Now, I can speak a lot more and we can unpack that, but there will be plenty of opportunities in the year to do so. So to all the new students and to all the current students, we wish you success in the year ahead at the Da Vinci Institute for Technology Management. To all our staff, our alumni, and our other stakeholders in our network, we wish you a wonderful 2022 a year ahead. So I want to conclude and say, as we stand here today, welcome to the place of hope. Welcome to the place that inspires imagination. Welcome to a place that nurtures creativity. Welcome to a place of ideas. Welcome to the home of remarkability. Thank you, Dr. Kunin. Thank you very much, Prof. Klopper. Much appreciated. I think those messages are really important. But there's two things I want to say out of that. It is that it is very important to us that we speak of things that the brand, or as a brand, that we value. But it is about each and every individual's choice whether they want to take that on board or not. What we say is that as Da Vincians, those are things that we hope you will be able to align with, that it will be something that will speak to your inner voice that Sachaba spoke to, 
or that it will be able to ignite your love, your passion, as Franzel spoke to. And I think for us as an institute, we hope that every single student finds their own voice because when you do find your own voice, you are able to go out into society and truly influence the co-creation of humane and sustainable societies for others. If you do not hear your own voice and you do not hear your inner heartbeat and what makes you tick, you will not be able to find that. And that is why later we will be engaging with our talented musicians around beats and mu music and drums because it is all connected to the way in which we need to awaken our senses if we are truly going to understand the depth of the privilege that we have to be students at an institute of higher learning. I know at Da Vinci we only speak of cooperative engagement and we do not speak of having one specific head. So I'm going to reposition this by saying that every single herd has to have a prized bull. And our prized purple cow bull is certainly in our executive chairman and chairperson, I will rather say, um, and that is Professor Ben Anderson. I think many of you understand that when we speak about the blood that flows through Da Vinci as being purple, when we speak about co-creating realities, when we speak about influencing the co-creation of humane, sustainable societies, when we think about ecosystemic thinking, these are all areas that in the infancy stage of Da Vinci were ideas that came out of Prof. Anderson. He would absolutely hate me saying this about him. But the truth is that we are all sitting here today because of the way he was able to manage technology, innovation, and people in a systemic way. And the way that he has enabled the entire executive the council, as well as the Senate of the Institute, to be our own agile, engaged, and aligned leaders to take the Institute into its next trajectory. However, systemic thinking always needs a bit of disruption. And Prof. Anderson is somebody who certainly knows how to take a systemic approach to everything that he focuses on. I think many of us would like to be the type of systemic thinker he is. And the reason for that is because the sum of the parts certainly make up the whole. And at Da Vinci, we speak about our cooperative galaxy. And that really is the best example of how the sum of the parts makes up the whole. Without the gas and without the energy and without the stars and without all of those aspects connecting and collecting themselves, we would not have a galaxy. And so our cooperative galaxy at the Da Vinci Institute's connection and collection of dots is certainly influenced by the energy of our executive chairperson, Professor Ben Anderson, who will do the closing address today at the academic opening. Prof Anderson. Thank you very much, Marla. I just want to make a comment before I start and say I think Da Vinci is doing very well. And thank you for, for everyone that makes his or her personal contribution. This is your space as much as it's mine. So I come from a, a different space this morning. And I want to talk about smell. And I wonder if I ask the question, how does Da Vinci smell? What comes to your mind? So I want to raise the first question and ask, who knows what is Moscow Krishnaya? Ladies, Moscow, Krishnaya. So in 1913, the Empress of Russia, the late Catherine II, called on the expertise, the minds, 
and I would almost say the cooperative minds of two French perfumeries, Michel and Bao. And the Empress had a need that she wants to leave a legacy that will remind the Russian people and women in particular of what it means to be Russian. A few years later, a young lady from France, Coco Chanel, decided that she wants to leave a legacy for women. And she spoke to Michelle and Baal, and they created to what you will know today as Chanel number five. And the symbolism of Chanel number five was freedom of choice, of mind, of character was about energy, and if I may, about co-creating, about reaching out to what is non-existent, about challenging, accepting norms. And in 1921, she launched the Chanel number five. But at the same time, there was a woman called, born, Paulina Chemchu China. And Chemchu China was Jewish in origin. But she was born in Russia. And she decided to change her name to Pearl Karposkaya. And Chemchu China decided to talk to Bao and Michelle because she decided she also wants to leave a legacy. She was married to Molotov, who was the right hand of Stalin. Chemchu China was conservative, was power hungry, was normatively inclined, embraced culture, to the large extent, and wanted Russian women to keep staying Russian. And she created a fragrance called Moscow Krishnaya. And Moscow Krishnaya came known as Red Moscow. Now, whom amongst you in the audience know about Chanel number no. five? A show of hands. And whom of you know about Rod Red Moscow? Marizan? So that doesn't need to be in a cater that the one is more influential than the others. Both Krishnaya or both Pearl Karpovsky or Shem Chuchina, she was renamed and Coco Chanel made us aware of the power of scent, of smell. Coco Chanel, to be free, to reach to new boundaries. Red Moscow, to be traditional. If I think of the academics as this is an academic opening, I would wonder if the colleagues would like to think of themselves as a smell. Whether it will be Chanel number no. five or whether it will be Red Moscow. And the one, again, is not necessarily better than the other. And I would hope that the academic team at Da Vinci will consider the two fragrances and we'll consider what is the fragrance that we want the academic project to represent at Da Vinci. 
Is it one of pushing boundaries, of reaching to new worlds, of reconfiguring reality? Or is it the fragrance of training people to regurgitate what exists? Are we telling our students new stories? Are we challenging ourselves for new insights? Are we co-creating a voice which is true to ourselves? For each of one of you, both the academic team as well as all the support team towards the academic project for this year, Prof. Habia, for you and your team, I wish that you will consider the fragrance of Da Vinci. And whether in a hundred years' time, as is the case with Chanel and Red Moscow, they're both on the market still, the one just more successful than the other. Whether we will think of Da Vinci a hundred years from here, and when we will ask to a new audience at that time, do you know about Da Vinci? That we will contribute towards the possibility that they may say, yes, we know. Thank you very much for the opportunity to address you today, to our colleagues online and to Prof. Bari. Thank you for everyone's presence. And thank you for all the, the work and dedication that has made it possible for Da Vinci to be at this point. Thank you very much. Thank you, Prof. Anderson. So where Prof. Anderson comes from, I think he's also trying to imply that it might be some warm heat out of a part of a cow that the smell can also be. And I think it's a critical point that he's making in that when we speak about the smell that we would want to exude as an institute, smell is something quite complicated because what smell does is it also ignites your other senses. You can close your eyes and you can smell something and you can picture it and you can really conjure something up. And the other day, Prof. Anderson and I were having a discussion and I said to him that one of the things that saddens me the most about research in our country and in the world, it's not only a South African thing, is that so many people undertake their master's, doctoral, or any postgraduate studies. And at Da Vinci, that would also include those of you doing your Bachelor of Commerce because we have a research component in that. And they so often see themselves as wanting to be trained or to have a job. And the reality is that when you embark on, for example, postgraduate studies, part of the purpose of your qualification is to be trained as a researcher. That you should come out of there and you should be somebody who's able to contribute to research in this country and beyond. So I hope that the smell of academia for you is things like the pages of a book turning. And yes, I know that we're online and technologically driven, but that touch and feel of going through and moving through knowledge and actually getting to the point where you are able to create, disseminate, and really enjoy the smell of knowledge, the taste of knowledge, the hearing of knowledge, and the touch of knowledge. So we are going to have our interactive drummers doing our session. Um, till about 5 to 2, so about 30, 25 minutes, and then I will close off the academic opening. But I want to say to each of you that have joined us online, I hope you will continue to stay connected as we do the drumming, because what I want to say is that that beat of your own heart is the thing that I hope you hold on to most this year, because that is you self-reflecting. That is you being able to decide what fragrance you want to be part of your academic journey. I think, as Prof. Anderson says, there's different meaning to different fragrances. 
but I hope each and every one of you creates your own scent and you are able to contribute your scent to the community. Before we do the drumming, given that this is an academic opening and we have raised the South African flag, I would now like to call on um, Insika Yasizwe Marimba Band to please come and sing the National Anthem of the Republic of South Africa. I would like to ask those in attendance to please rise for the singing of the National Anthem. <laughs> do the interactive part of our drumming. Everyone can be seated, but I want to officially close the academic opening aspect given that we've sung the national anthem now, and I want to deliver the last part of the